So, dear family, how about that gospel? Some strong stuff in there. So I'll be sort of academic with you and then on the spiritual part and some suggestions. It was very difficult when Jesus gave this gospel and the people that he was with, his own relatives as well as the Jewish people who were around him, this was very, very difficult to hear. Remember when Jesus says, I come to give you a new commandment. That's it. Because they lived by the eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And do you know what happened? They were continually at war. One theologian and spiritual director says, if this keeps up, we're going to have a whole bunch of blind people and we're not going to have any peace because everybody's going to be running around trying to figure out who's who. The other one said, if you turn the other cheek, remember you only have two, so it has to stop there. You do one cheek and then the other. None of that is really comforting, is it? No. So we have to take a look at this. As I look over as we prepare for this Lenten season, right at this moment, my concern is this. You do not need more information. Every day your life is filled full of stuff coming your way, telling you about all kinds of things and certain points of view. What I believe that you need at this time is a certain clarity so that you can go forward in a good way. Choosing to have Lent be a very good time for you and a very good time for me, for us. So, what is the clarity I want to offer here? <clears throat> First of all, the people, most of us here, I would imagine, and don't hold up your hand, do not have enemies. But we have people that we dislike, is that not the case? Be honest. Yes. Oh, well, that was weak. <laughs> I believe we have some pikers here. All right. We know that there are people that, let's put it this way, we're not going to eat chicken dinner every Sunday with, okay? Well, it's not going to happen. <laughs> However, how we treat them is important. And <clears throat> I remember uh, this being behind someone who, at the store, things were counted up as they do, and sometimes you may be so surprised at this, the cashier makes a mistake. <coughs> or you have the person who had something underneath something else and you didn't check it out. So you say, yeah, I got this for free. So what you do is that you're capitalizing on someone's mistake. Is that not correct? So what's the appropriate thing that all of St. Peter's people do? They turn around and give it back. Is that not right? Say yes. yes. All right, yeah, all right, now I'm clear. So you understand what I mean about this. In our life, there are various levels of persons whom we consider part of our life. And some of those people are on the fringe. That does not, and Jesus tells us, does not give a right, give us a right to treat them otherwise. Because in the reading from Leviticus, it says, love your neighbor as yourself. There are no qualifications there. It doesn't say, love this person if it's convenient for you. Love this person if, if you can. It's not the way it works. Our challenge is to love our neighbor as ourself. And you know the definition, I gave this to you many times. 
Your neighbor is everybody in this world who is not you. Are we clear about that? Yes. This is real important. So no matter where you go, there are neighbors. And it's important that you treat them. You're not going to walk up to somebody ordinarily and say, well, your birthday's coming up maybe, so I'm going to give you a gift. And say, whoa, whoa. No, we're not going to do that. But the person who understands this principle is open to every person whom he or she meets. And you know why? Because each of those persons bring a special part of who God is. And if we're open to it, we can learn from it. If we're not, we let a gift go by. I give, want to give you this one example, which I've used many times here. Years ago, when I was a chaplain, I worked in a nursing home. And I'm walking down the aisle like this, and there's a lady sitting here named Mary. I'm not talking about anybody here, just so it's clear. And as I walk by her, she says, Priest! Oh, she's got a good loud voice. So I come back and say, yes, Mary, what is it that you need? She said, look over there. She was pointing out her bed. She said, I want you to take me to there now. I said, Mary, I don't have, I don't have the authority to do that. If you wait a minute, I'll get a nurse. She looked up at me and said, Father, cut the crap. I don't think I'm going to be inviting Mary to chicken dinner very soon. Okay? So I bring this up so that you understand that I understand that as we go through life, there are certain things that are going to happen, and during those situations, we're not always going to like what's happening. But Jesus challenges us to respond in an appropriate manner. And there are a couple of things that we need to recognize. One is, as I mentioned earlier, each person brings something special about God in his or her life, every single one, which means you also have it. So let your story touch their story by being open to them. It may or may not work. Jesus didn't say, love your neighbor as yourself and that you're going to feel all giddy and wonderful afterwards. He didn't say that. He said love. Sometimes it's going to go really, really well, and sometimes there's going to be a Mary. I'm picking on no one here. Are you with me so far? The importance of making this adjustment. Now, the last part of this is going to be hard to hear, but it's important because it's at the very heart of becoming a person who can love, do one loving act after another. And that is we need to embrace more quietness. <laughs> From morning till night, we are bombarded with stuff. Even if you turn your radio off, you go down the highway, there are signs, there are stores, all kinds of things trying to sell you things. You're being bombarded all the time. And we have lost a certain amount of reverence for quietness. And during this holy season, I'm encouraging you to relook at this issue in your life because the language of God is the language of quietness. What happens to us is that so much of our life is bombarded with all kinds of things that we begin to feel a certain kind of anxiousness. 
And then we think that anxiousness is just that ordinary thing that's a part of our life. No, it's not. What we need is to learn to re-embrace quietness. And you do this a little bit at a time. Now, I will tell you that there are going to be times when you're distracted because your thoughts are running. That's okay. That's okay. But in time, you will learn. You don't shut it out. What you do, and you don't fight against it, you just let it pass by. Do you understand the understanding there? So you're not fighting against noise. You're not fighting against distractions. You're simply going to let them go. That's why you have this ear and this ear, in this one and out the other. Okay? Think of it. Just say, in this ear, out the other. Learn to accept quietness. And in that quietness, you're going to come to a deeper and more precious understanding of your own personal life, as well as your life with your brothers and sisters and with God. The depth of it depends upon your effort. And you do it a little at a time, a little at a time. My suggestion is 15 minutes. That doesn't sound like a lot. And also, it's important that you start early in the day, open the day with it. Weeks ago, I told you, as you sit on the edge of your bed, especially those of us who are older, because I'm not bouncing out of my bed. In fact, there's no bounce at all. <clears throat> is that I say, Holy Trinity, thank you and then help me to do one loving act after another, and then do the things you ordinarily do, and then take some quiet time. For some of us, it may mean five minutes at first. Then we can do 10. But the rewards are marvelous, and they're great, if only we are willing to take the time to do that. It's an extraordinary amount of goodness will come to you if you learn to listen to the Lord in your personal quietness so that the good that you are may continue to break forward and push out the other things in your life that are not good. The Lord speaks to you in the quietness and he always has the same message. He always calls us by name, and he says to us, above all, remember that I love you as if you were the only person in the entire world.